that are clapping. So this is just a huge, yes, Judge Grant's motion to dismiss with prejudice in this case. And why is this happening? It's because of evidence that was not turned over to defense counsel in this case. This is this ammunition. So a man with the last name of Teske came into the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office, turned in some ammunition that he claimed everyone has been duped in this case by a man with the by the name of Seth Kenny. And so he was claiming that the prosecutor knew about about this, that it wasn't turned over. In fact, the crime scene technician who was on the stand, this is Marissa Papel. She was on the stand yesterday. She was talking about this ammunition. What did she say? She said that she filed this evidence into a different word doc. Alex Spiro, defense counsel, asked, I don't even know what that means. Why would it be filed into a different file and not put into the file of the movie set of Rust? Today on the stand, Carrie Morrissey was asked about that as well. Even Corporal Hancock, who was on the stand, the judge at times would ask her questions and ask her, who was in this meeting and this decision-making process to put this evidence into a different file? And Corporal Hancock said the prosecutor was Carrie Morrissey. At that point, Carrie Morrissey told the judge that she would testify in this case. You know what the judge said to her? She said, you bet, you bet you will. You're going to testify. And then Carrie Morrissey had to get up on the stand and Alex Spiro got a chance to cross-examine her, talking about and accusing the prosecution team as well as law enforcement here in the Santa Fe Sheriff's Office of hiding evidence, burying evidence, duping the defense team. He talked about how there were evidence viewings and that defense team would come here to Santa Fe to view evidence in this case and that evidence, that ammunition that the man by the last name of Teske brought into the sheriff's office, that was never displayed for defense counsel in this case. Defense counsel said over and over again to the judge in this case, you have been giving the, given the prosecution so many chances in this case to get things right, to make remedies, and this is about the last straw. That's kind of how the defense was positioning this case. Now, Carrie Morsey always tried to argue throughout this case that it really doesn't matter about this evidence because what we are charging Alec Baldwin with here is that he acted recklessly on the movie set of Rust, that he broke that cardinal rule of pulling a trigger. Even if you thought that it had dummy rounds or blank rounds, you always check it. Any gun owner knows that. We've heard that from so many people who have contacted us via social media telling us that is a cardinal rule. You never point a gun, if you think it's loaded, not loaded, at somebody and pull the trigger. You always have to double check, triple check it, even if you're relying on someone else. So in a way, it seemed there were a lot of people that believed Alec Baldwin acted with disregard, a disregard for all the safety measures that are on the movie set of Ross. So in a way, the prosecution was going uh, in a good direction. But then we started to hear about this evidence. This was yesterday when Alec Spiro brought this to the attention of everyone uh, in this courtroom. It was a surprise. And then, of course, today, that motion to dismiss, the jury was set home, and now the judge has granted this motion to dismiss with prejudice in this case against Alec Baldwin. As you can imagine, the scene outside this courtroom is just going crazy outside the Santa Fe County Courthouse. People are running. They may be coming out right now. Yes, yes, Alec Baldwin, he is making his way outside the courtroom right now along, I'm sorry, I stood up, but if you can kind of see them in the distance, he is making his way outside the courtroom right now along with his defense team his brother Stephen his wife Hilaria they are walking out just in jubil jubilation what a major development here in Santa Fe New Mexico of course you can see them now getting into that SUV that SUV is parked here every day they get a call to come down and wait outside the courthouse because often there's hecklers outside the courthouse here that are yelling obscenities at Alec Baldwin, telling him, how do you feel that you killed someone by the name of Helena Hutchins? Of course, she is not to be forgotten in this case. She tragically lost her life in this case when Alec Baldwin on that movie set of Rust, according to the prosecution, pulled the trigger and inside was that live ammunition. Today, we were trying to get to the bottom of how exactly that live ammunition ended up. The defense counsel claims it's because of Seth Kenny and live ammunition was co-mingled with dummy rounds and that's how it ended up on the movie set of rust but the prosecution says that a hannah gutierrez brought it on the movie set of rust of course this 
development today dismissing this case against Alec Baldwin, I would assume is going to have major uh, ramifications for the case against Hannah Gutierrez-Reed because she immediately after she was found guilty, we were inside the courtroom when she was found guilty many months ago, the judge remanded her immediately into custody. She broke into tears. Her mother was inside the courtroom. There was a big hoopla inside that courtroom because, of course, they couldn't believe that she was remanded into custody immediately. She had not had any prior criminal record, but the judge said in that case, there's a death in this case. You're to be remanded immediately. So Fast forward a few months, then we have this case against Alec Baldwin for the same charges, saying he's also responsible, having a due disregard for the safety on the movie set of Rust. But again, you're seeing, if anyone is just joining us, this involuntary manslaughter case against Alec Baldwin has been dismissed by the judge. The jury was not present for this hearing that took place. The, also, the big development is the special prosecutor ended up resigning. This was right before this public hearing took place in this case to dismiss. And again, the judge granted it. Julia, we'll send it back to you. Kelly Craft with the breaking news out of New Mexico. We are seeing everyone rushing around. I saw a crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson and court TV anchor Ted Rollins seeing if we can get any sound from people who are there outside of that courthouse. Can you tell if the attorneys have left or if there are people congregating? Yes. Are they going to be speaking out? Because this is major news today. It's been shock upon shock as the jury was sent home, as you mentioned, and now uh, this is it. He's a free man, especially because we're seeing with prejudice, a dismissal with prejudice. What are you seeing right now? The attorneys just walked out of the courtroom momentarily ago, and so they walked over there with Alec Baldwin, Stephen Baldwin. Matt Johnson's joining me right now. Matt, we were, we were inside the courtroom. I came out to do the hits, and then we were hearing as we were about to go live that, one, the special prosecutor resigned earlier, and then this breaking news about this case against Alec Baldwin being dismissed. I saw you were able to run over there. Did you see anything? Did Alec Baldwin say anything? No comments to anybody. They walked out in tears, including Mr. Spire was in tears. Um, you know, I asked him if he would do an interview with us. He said that he doesn't do interviews across the board. And um, they didn't give any comment. They want a huge victory. They don't have, these charges will not be refiled, as you were saying. And uh, in the courtroom, it just erupted in a huge gasp. His family members, they were looking over at me. They were shaking their head. Um, they busted in tears and uh, they broke down in tears, rather. And um, everyone was comforting Hilaria. And then she ran over to Alec as he came up to the to the short wall and they embraced and then they needed a moment before they could exit the courthouse just craziness and so with prejudice or without prejudice the judge always has the decision to dismiss a case with prejudice or without prejudice but in this case it seems that it is not because of her ruling it will not be able to be tried again the judge was not happy Matt you were sitting a little bit in front of me inside the courtroom you could tell the feelings inside that courtroom the judge was not happy this is a no-nonsense judge and don't get us wrong you know she's doing her business business uh, on behalf of the state uh, of New Mexico here and uh, you could tell that she may have made her decision halfway through this hearing today. She was very pointed with her questions. She knows her business and um, she was not happy that it came to this point and she called it gross negligence on behalf of the prosecutors, the special prosecutors. And we didn't actually know that uh, Special Prosecutor Johnson had resigned. Um, we thought that there was something else going on. She kind of stormed out of the courtroom. Um, some of the other staff had to bring her bags out to her. Um, we were not made aware of that until the cross-examination of, of the prosecutor. And why she said, why Kerry Morrissey said on cross-examination by Alec Baldwin's defense counsel, why her co-counsel ended up resigning is because she did not agree with the judge's decision to have this public hearing on the motion to dismiss. And why would that be as a prosecutor? She probably just didn't want to hear everyone to hear about exactly what took place. Obviously, Alinda John Johnson was appointed later on in this case. She's fresh to this case, obviously was up to speed and was doing a very fine job. But then she starts finding out about this ammunition and how someone brought it into the sheriff's office. Carrie Morsey was claiming that uh, Corporal Hancock was claiming she really didn't know too much about it either. But then that story was getting torn apart by defense team. Well, because you had... Um Carrie Morrissey on on questioning um, actually admitting to the fact that she knew about all of this and that she said that she thought that it was going to be placed in the same case file but then it wasn't and really the the defense here had a big case a strong case that it was being hidden from them they were using words like duped 
hiding the evidence. One of the questions uh, Alex asked to Corporal Hancock on the stand, what other evidence are you hiding from the defense team? And of course, as anyone knows, prosecuting a case or as defense counsel in a case, you need to hand over all of the evidence and the fact that they did not have this evidence, that was just a big, big momentum for defense counsel. We started to feel it yesterday. This morning, there were a few discussions. Some people were chatting, chatting and saying, I think she's going to grant this motion to dismiss, which a lot of people are like, wow, that is just going to be such a huge victory, of course, for defense. Well, today started with a motion to dismiss on other grounds, and then it was discovered that these um, the three Starline brass matched in the evidence, um, in that evidence folder. And it was just something also to see in the courtroom when you have a judge that says, I'm going to open this evidence myself. She put on the gloves, and they pulled those out, and then everybody said we didn't know that those were in there and they match what was on the set of rust it was so interesting to watch the judge keep saying that she wanted to also ask questions of corporal mm -hmm. hancock and then when the defense counsel was asking corporal hancock how many times did you try to contact troy teske because we went through your your cell phone we went through the phones and there are no calls to troy teske because she kept saying on the stand corporal hancock that she tried to contact this good samaritan who brought ammunition in to the sheriff's office who said that you have been duped in this case but the defense team was just tearing that apart and what did she finally say she said well it was from maybe an undisclosed number and he said oh okay it was an undisclosed number at that point in time the judge kind of held her head and then she looked up um, she was not believing right. that testimony and then she did some additional follow-up questions but you know that that was around the same time as that big moment when everyone in the gallery just gasped when it was under the direction of the prosecutor along with sheriff's department investigators to place it in a different file. It's been so interesting just to be out here in Santa Fe. Uh, Ted Rowland's been out here. You've been out here. We've been out here. We have an entire crew out here. Our court TV cameras have been inside. And just watching the demeanor of Alec Baldwin from day one. Monday, we were not expecting him to be here. We had heard that he had waived his appearance. But then he showed up. Tuesday, first day of trial, I saw him right there outside of the courtroom. And he looked strong. He looked confident, ready to go. The last few days, I was noticing he, he looked a little more tired, a little more restless. At times during one of the hearings when Carrie Morrissey was talking about how Alec Baldwin, this was out of the presence of the jury, had a motivation to lie. He got up and he walked out of the courtroom during that time. At that time, his wife and his brother, his support system, they were not inside the courtroom. So it appeared as if things were wearing on him. What a dramatic turn of events with this case being dismissed against him. Yeah, and the optics outside of the courthouse as well. So he shows up on Monday after he waived his right for an appearance and he shows up with his toddler hands that over to a caretaker the baby and then he walks in hand in hand with his wife who is seated right behind him they caress they whisper at every sidebar at every you know break during testimony and then outside the courthouse um, after hours they're seen shopping in downtown Santa Fe and push and he's pushing the stroller so there was a lot of optics around um, around this case with him Everybody was talking about that, the optics with her affection toward him, them holding their hands, him showing up on Monday when he initially had waived his appearance. That was the day that the judge ruled that Carrie Morrissey, the special prosecutor in this case, could not bring up the fact that he was a producer on the movie set of Rust. I thought that was a, a major uh, disadvantage for the prosecution because as a prosecutor, you want to go out there and you want to talk about that. The buck stops here. He's the man in charge. But then the judge ended up saying that Carrie Morrissey cannot bring that in. And so in a way, defense was starting to get some little victories and, of course, the major victory today. Julia, we'll send it back to you. Hey, Kelly, we're seeing on the video right now this picture of Alec Baldwin in tears, and I'm wondering, you're there with Matt. Let me know, this is the moment when he was hearing that these charges against him, this entire case, dismissed with prejudice, meaning that the prosecution can't bring these charges again against him. Can you just real quick react to this moment if you or Matt was inside of the courtroom during this time? 
And I'm going to let Matt answer that. Yeah, about 30 seconds. But you can see Alec Baldwin there. This is the moment. This is the moment that they realize that they're going to drop the charges and they cannot be refiled. He just breaks down in tears. His defense attorney does as well. And everyone just comforts his wife because she is breaking down in her seat behind him. And can you imagine this? That he has several kids, little kids, at home. This has been very trying on him. Of course, also, the, the family of Helena Hutchins, the tragic loss of her, the cinematographer here. Uh, so we're going to have to see what happens next with the uh, Helena, um, uh, the Hannah Gutierrez case. We'll send it back to you. More coverage of this bombshell moment there in New Mexico after this. Stay with us. You are watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Tonight, on Closing Arguments, high drama in the Alec Baldwin manslaughter trial. We'll unpack today's biggest moments as our experts weigh in. Closing Arguments with Vinny Politan. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Who is Billy Ray Turner? How does he have any connection to Lorenzen Wright? He was manipulated. See plans, see plot, see the reason why he's gone. Accomplice to Murder with Vinny Politan. Sunday night, 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. This prong is satisfied. The suppressed evidence is favorable to the accused. It is impeachment evidence, has even been offered in this trial as impeachment evidence, and is potentially exculpatory to the defense. Critically, the exculpatory value cannot be analyzed at such a late juncture because of the non-disclosure. Is the evidence material? While post-trial discovery of evidence under Brady requires a reasonable probability that the result of the proceeding would have been different, Discovery of evidence during trial requires an evaluation of whether the late tender has impeded the effective use of evidence in such a way that it impacts the fundamental fairness of the proceedings, and that is uh, State versus Huerta Castro. This evidence is material. The late discovery of this evidence during trial has impeded the effective use of evidence in such a way that it has impacted the fundamental fairness of the proceedings. The defense is not in a position to test the state's theory as to the source of the live rounds that killed Ms. Hutchins. I'm also going to take a look at Harper, State versus Harper. The assessment of sanctions depends upon the extent of the government's culpability, weighed against the amount of prejudice to the state, quoting Chouinard. Let's go through culpability. Our case law generally provides that the refusal to comply with a district court's discovery order only rises to the level of exclusion or dismissal where the state's conduct is especially culpable, such as where evidence is unilaterally withheld by the state in bad faith or all access to the evidence is precluded by state intransience. The state is highly culpable for its failure to provide this discovery to the defendant. The state unilaterally withheld a supplemental report. Santa Fe County Sheriff's Officer made the decision, and apparently also with the, with the prosecutor, as pursuant to Hancock's testimony, that the evidence was of no evidentiary value and failed to connect the evidence to the instant case. The case agent, as well as pursuant to Hancock's testimony, Ms. Morrissey, was aware of the new evidence and yet did not make an effort to disclose it to defense. The state's willful withholding of this information was intentional and deliberate. If this conduct does not rise to the level of bad faith, it certainly comes so near to bad faith as to show signs of scorching. Prejudice. When discovery has been produced late, prejudice does not accrue unless the evidence is material and the disclosure is so late that it undermines the definition, the defendant's preparation for trial. The court concludes that this conduct is highly prejudicial to the defendant. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and this disclosure during the course of trial is so late that it undermines the defendant's preparation for trial. There is no way for the court to right this wrong. Lesser sanctions under Harper. Trial courts possess broad discretionary authority to decide what sanction to impose when a discovery order is violated, State versus Lemire. The sanction of dismissal is the only warranted remedy. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and a mistrial would not be based upon manifest necessity. Further, the sanction of dismissal is warranted in this case. The state has repeatedly made representations to defense and to the court that they were compliant with all their discovery obligations. 
Despite their repeated representations, they have continued to fail to disclose critical evidence to the defendant. Brady and Harper are satisfied. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted. Court also has power, inherent power. Per State v. Lemire, where discovery violations inject needless delay into the proceedings, courts may impose meaningful sanctions to effectuate their inherent power and promote efficient judicial administration. The state's discovery violation has injected a needless and curable delay into the instant jury trial. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system and the efficient administration of justice. Your motion to dismiss with prejudice is granted. Now, with respect to the jury, I don't imagine you all want to return on Monday. I will take care of the jury. Thank you, Your We are in recess. Welcome back to Court TV Live. We are following breaking news this hour out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Moments ago, the judge in the case dismissed all charges against Alec Baldwin on a motion to dismiss by his counsel saying that there was a discovery violation, that important evidence wasn't turned over to them and that they just learned more details about it during this trial. This is his reaction, actor Alec Baldwin reacting, shaking there in the courtroom with emotion and tears, knowing that this three-year saga being under this cloud of scrutiny, suspicion, and criminal charges has now evaporated due to what his attorneys argued. And that scathing decision by the judge really casting a not so good a light on the prosecution in this case and how they handled it, how they handled the discovery in this case and the charges against this defendant who is a defendant no more. Let's go out to the courthouse where our teams are standing by and they are getting a press conference from Carrie Morsey, the special prosecutor in this case who is at the center of this motion to dismiss hearing today. Let's go out. Uh, no, we didn't. We did everything humanly possible to bring justice uh, to Helena and to her family and we're proud of the work that we did. Uh, again, we disagree with the court's decision, but we have to respect it. You so where do, you, where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? Sir, do you have anything to add? I don't. I, uh, I respect the court's decision also, and I agree with the prosecutor. All right, there they are, pressing through that media scrum, everyone wanting to know what happened. Today was supposed to be a day of testimony. We thought Hannah Gutierrez was going to be taking the stand in her inmate outfit to talk about or to plead the fifth as a state witness to see what's happening. Let's listen to see if we hear any more answers from Carrie Morrissey. No, 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 no. You guys decided to separate it. The three live rounds. Excuse me. Excuse me. Stop. Everybody, take it easy. I don't want anybody to get arrested. Okay. It's just a 30 second talk. To us. But, yeah. but you guys, I just said, you guys decided to separate it. So that's what I. What do you mean? Yeah. Under, what, what, what do you mean? Yeah. Separate. Yeah. 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 It had separate. It had separate case numbers. So you did know that the evidence existed. You you heard my testimony today, right? Yes, but I'm asking for okay. clarification. So, you know, so, so my, my testimony is is what I. We still believe this had nothing to do with it. Uh, no All right, we're going to continue to work on that feed. There's a lot of media there, a lot of equipment, so we know that uh, sometimes that complicates the feed there, but you were hearing Carrie Morrissey reacting to all of that. So what we're going to do right now, we have our teams there. We have legal correspondent Kelly Kraft there on the ground. We have crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson, and you saw Court TV anchor Ted Rollins there also trying to get that information from the state in this very strange, sudden turn of events there inside of the courtroom.